So in the last lecture, you already tried a small exercise. So you did a few samples, so you resembling a few times from the same population to get a sample with eight observations. And after that, you calculate the statistic for each of the sample. And you found that statistic that you calculate for each of the sample are slightly different. But however, the difference should be not that much. Okay. And after you compare with the statistic of the all your samples with the statistic they calculate by other groups, you also found out that the although mean or standard deviation that you calculate are slightly different, but they are not differ that much. Okay, you can see that most of them are concentrated to the certain value. Okay, so this is uh, a theory that we call the central limit theorem. So when an infinite number of the repeated random sample, just like what you did just now, so infinite number, so you need to have a lot, a lot of sample. Okay, then we will end up with an normal distributions of sample means. Back to the all the statistics that calculate by all the groups, when you make a box plot of all this value or histogram of all this value, you will end up with a more or less a normal distribution for sample means. So all the means of the sample. So according to the theorem, because of this, the mean of that distribution, so is this distribution, the distribution, distribution of sample mean, will be the mean of the population. So we can pause this video and try to calculate the mean for all the samples that you calculate, okay, all the group calculate in the previous lecture. After that, you also calculate the mean of the population of all the 50 group leaders and see how much they are different from each other. So you can pause this video and then try to do it yourself. So this is exactly what happened. So for example, if you sample 50 samples, and each sample consists of 10 observations, so the n is 10. And after you repeat 15 times, you end up with this distribution of each of the sample, the data set of each of the sample. So each of the sample is slightly different, correct? Okay, so this is for the first sampling. So after you get the data from 10 observations, let's say it's a body height, then after that you make a boss plot. So the boss plot is one of the way you can use to uh, describe the characteristic of your data. So you can see the maximum, minimum, where is the medium, whether the data is normally distributed. So af after that, if you've done the second sampling, then you can obtain the data and then you make another plot plot. So you can see the data that you obtain is slightly different between different samples. So this is what we call sampling error. Okay, the sampling error is a common error which you cannot avoid. This happened by chance. However, we know that all these samples, okay, all these observation is from one population. So let's say this is the population distribution. So this is after we gather all the data and then we calculate. In most cases, you will not be able to know this. Okay, whether your sample, your population is too large or the population is an imaginary population. Okay, So what you see here is a distribution for all the data for the population. And the green line here is the mean. Okay, it's the mean. So the mean is 160 point something here. Okay, And then for each of your sample, you also have your sample mean. So this is your sample mean. Okay. So you can see for each of your sample, the mean is different from each other. Okay. And the mean also slightly different from the population mean, which you don't know. Okay. So what we're going to do, usually we're going to use the mean to estimate, the sample mean to estimate the population parameter. So the population mean. After you have the mean, 
of each of the sample and actually we can calculate the, okay, the distribution of sample mean what we call the sample mean distribution and for this distribution of all the mean then we can calculate the mean of the mean so this is the distribution of all the sample mean then we can calculate the mean so you cannot see clearly but the mean of the sample mean distribution is very close to the population mean so this is one of the scenario okay where we have 15 sample and for each sample we have 10 observations so now I show you another scenario where we have more observation for the samples so everything is the same the population is still the same we still obtain 15 samples from the population but this time for each sample we have 20 observation rather than 10 so as you can see the variations or the difference among sample is not as great as previous example okay so similarly we still have the population so it's a, exactly the same population that we used just now so the difference is that each sample now we have 20 observations okay so we still have the mean and also we still have the mean of each of these sample so we still calculate the statistic for each of this sample and as you can see the mean of each of these sample is slightly different from the population mean which is a green color line so this is a population mean okay if you do this so you can see slightly different okay based on this sample statistic the sample means we can take all these 15 means and then make a box plot okay to make a sampling distributions so after that we can calculate the mean of this sampling distribution so as you can see the mean of this sampling distribution is almost same as the population mean so you might also observe that the variation of the sample means is smaller much smaller than the example before so that means that the, the sample size has a very big implications on the sampling distributions okay even though the sample is from the same population so now we move to the another, another example this time we have a sample still 15 sample but this time we have 40 observations for each sample okay and now you can see each of the sample okay the data distributions is very similar to the populations even though we only take a sample so this is only 40 and equal to 40 and this is a population the entire population as you compare to the two examples just now this time each of the sample the distribution of the data sets is very similar to population and after we calculate the mean as you can see the mean of each of the sample although it's still different from the population mean in most cases but the difference is much smaller so if you if we use take all these 15 means and then plot a sample distribution make a box plot and then we calculate the mean we will find out that the variation of the means is much smaller in this case where we have 40 observation for each of the sample so if you put everything together so this is the population the green color so usually we don't know the exact mean okay so we don't know this okay just imagine that in most cases we don't know this so we use the sample okay to estimate the population parameters okay so the mean of the population let's say in this case is 160.04 then each of this plot so actually we bring each of this if each of the three examples just now and then put them together so it's are uh, the mean of 15 random sample from the same populations and for the first one is a sample size 10 so each of the sample we have 10 observations the second one is 20 and the third one is 40 so as you can see as your sample size increase you will have a more accurate estimate of for your populations okay so as 
the data distributions. So now it's, we're talking about sampling distribution. Okay. So if you recall what we learned in the data distribution, if you have the data set, we can calculate the mean and also standard deviation. So similarly, we can calculate the mean and also standard deviation for our sampling distribution. So for mean, we still use the same formula, but for standard deviation, we use a slightly different formula. Because as we can see, the, the variations or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is influenced by the sample size. So in the formula, we need to include the sample size. Okay. So the largest the sample size, the smaller the standard deviation of sampling distribution. Observation distribution of a population is what you learned before, and now you learn about sampling distribution. So sampling distribution, so observation distribution is a distribution for all the data, all the observation in the population. However, sampling distribution is a distribution of the mean of samples. So if the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution is also normally distributed. As the sample size increases, the sample distribution from any distribution will approach a normal distribution. And the expected mean so the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean, okay, which the sample were taken. Okay. So the example just now demonstrate this concept. So this is a distribution of observation, if you still recall. So in the axis, we have the observation. So this is each of the observation. And then we have the probability on the y axis. For distribution of sampling mean from a population or what we call the sampling distribution, on the y axis we still have the probability, but the probability for the sample mean is not for the um, observation. Okay? So as you can see in the s axis is the mean of the mean. Okay, so this is um, the each of this value represent the mean of the sample. So it's very important that you be able to differentiate between these two population. So this is an observation population, what we learned in the previous three lectures, and this is a sampling distribution. So it's a distribution of sample means. If the sample mean is normally distributed, Okay, and the sampling distribution also normally distributed. Then we can describe the sampling distributions. Okay, just like how we describe the observation distribution, the data distribution. So we can use mean or standard error of mean. So standard error of mean is the standard deviation. But in this case, we use the term standard error rather than standard deviation, just to make sure we do not miss up with the standard deviation. So when we describe the variation of the sampling distribution, we use the standard error. Okay. So for mean, it's still the same thing. Okay. So I use the same formula. So let's say you have 15 sample means. What you need to do, you need to sum it up and then divide by n. Okay. So we can estimate the mean of sampling distribution for sample mean. So it's very similar when you describe the data distributions, the formula. For standard error, so this is the symbol, standard error, okay, of mean. The way we calculate is very similar to the standard deviation, but the different thing is you need to take the variance divided by n, okay. So if you square root this okay to get the standard error so just this one move here to square root this one then we cancel out this then what is left is this so this is a formula for standard error of mean 
So as you can see, first you need to calculate the standard deviation. So in this case, if you have 15 samples, and each of the sample you have the mean, mean 1, mean 2, mean 3, all the way until mean 15, so you have the value. So you need to calculate the standard deviation of all this value. After you calculate the standard deviation, you have to divide by square root of n. So the n is the sample size, okay? The number of observation for each sample. So in this case, let's say if this is 15 sample and each of these with 10 observation, so each of these with 10 observation, then the n will be 10. So this is the formula that we use. So you have to remember this. It's very important. So it's very important that you know how to calculate the standard error of mean. So as you can see, given the few uh, number of samples, the largest your sample size, the smaller the standard error of mean, as you can see here. So if the n is 40, if you have value divided by 40, then the product will be smaller than the value you divide by 10, for example. So that's the reason why you can see the standard error, so the variation of the mean will be smaller when the sample size is larger.